The Ensigns of Command. Data races against time to save a human colony that's been marked for death by aliens. The episode starts with Data preparing to perform with a string quartet, and he says that the others say that his music doesn't have soul. And Picard forgets to turn off his cell phone, so right in the middle of performance, he gets up, and instead of walking around the back of the room, he walks right next to the performers. What a dick. <laughs> Captain, we're receiving a message from the Shaliak Corporate. The Enterprise receives a message from Shaliak Corporate. The Shaliak find humans on one of their planets and demand their removal, so the Enterprise goes to check it out. Picard says there's fatal radiation on that planet, so humans shouldn't be able to live there. These characters keep making concrete statements like people can't live on this planet, even though they've already turned out to be wrong about stuff like that multiple times. And then Beverly even refutes them in the very next scene. How can humans survive down there? They must have found a way to adapt. Mylan's work with radiation sensitivity suggests it is possible, perhaps with extensive virotherapy. The Shaliak are strongly driven by an adherence to contractual obligations, citing specific code for each decision made. So we know how well that will go, since the crew has shown that they can't even follow their own rules, let alone rules made in conjunction with others. <laughs> At one point, Riker talks about how the Shaliak perceive humans. The Shaliak consider humans a lower life form. He sounds pissed that they're being treated that way, but they treat other species like that all the time. Even other humans that are just living in a more primitive society. They decide to send Data down to figure out how there could be people on the planet. And Data finds over 15,000 descendants of a ship that originally crashed there a long time ago. The Sheliak give the Enterprise three days to evacuate the colonists, but that's not enough time. And they can't use their transporters because of the radiation in the area. So they try to appeal to the Sheliak for more time, which the Sheliak deny. They say that if the colonists are not removed, they will eradicate them. I thought it was really funny that the crew has such a hard time of dealing with this culture mainly because they actually follow the rules. I love how the Enterprise knows what the rules are, but they're so desperate to break them because in this instance the rules don't work in their favor. Data meets Goshevin, who's the leader of the people down on the planet, and he turns out to be nonsensically and cartoonishly arrogant for no reason, and also dubbed. Yeah, why is he dubbed? There are apparently weird conspiracy theories about why the original actor even had his name taken off of the episode, but I couldn't find any actual information. Maybe it's because he was terrible, because even without the dubbing, I can't imagine that his performance was very good. I was kind of bummed out that the colonists never explained how they adapted to the radiation that immediately killed over a third of their population. They say they learned to adapt to it in like an evolutionary sense, and it might just be the way they're talking about it, but that's the way people talk about evolution too, and that's not how it works, so that just frustrated me. Agreed. The colonists just say, we're not evacuating. The whole conflict of this episode is based pretty much on stupidity. Both sides are using arguments that only have significance to their own perspective, but those are the only arguments they can come up with. The other colonists point out many times that Goshevin is being irrational, stubborn, and dumb. It's the same thing as Riva and Riker's dad, where people point out that their character flaws are causing the entire conflict, which they admit, but they don't change it. The fact that they keep going back to that same idea is really frustrating. And during this whole thing, the Enterprise is still up above trying to negotiate with the Sheliak. Troy says, When the treaty was first negotiated, the Federation sent 372 legal experts. So yeah, I'm sure their plan is really going to pan out. That was the point where I knew that everyone on the planet was going to die. Picard keeps calling the situation a crisis and says they have a mutual problem, but they don't. The Federation has a problem, and that is supposed to override everything else. Self-centered perspective taken to an extreme. Sign me up for the next Sheliak transfer. I probably should not be relating to the quote bad guys of the episode. And coincidentally, they say a lot of this stuff I say in real life all the time. Conversation is neither required nor desired. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the portrayal of the Sheliak? I like the look of them. I like that they're not just another humanoid race. I like that they're in weird Zordon crystals with weird lighting. I thought it was cool. I agree. I thought it was cool. It was unique. Almost every time we see aliens on here, they just look like people with some ridges on their face. 
We've already seen how Picard reacts to someone holding a position of authority over him. Captain, we will continue these discussions when you calm down. And they cut him off here too, which is awesome. It is designed to smooth relations between races, not to act as a straight... At one point, the Sheliak says, We are entitled. And instead of jumping on that as a point of common ground, Picard proceeds to mansplain the concept of a treaty to a race who communicates in legal speak. When Data's down on the planet, a woman named Artie introduces herself by throwing a prop at Data. It's a good thing he's not programmed with aggressive defense reactions. <laughs> and she turns out to be our sympathetic character down on the planet. She's played by Eileen Seeley, who played Bruce Wayne's mother in Batman Forever. Turns out this episode is where George Lucas got the idea for the battle droids in the Star Wars prequels. So this episode is terrible in so many different ways. <laughs> Artie says the reason Goshevin won't listen is because Data is an android and he doesn't want to take orders from a machine. Which is stupid. How about Picard sends down like a post-it note saying, hey, I'm a human, you should leave before the Sheliak blow you up. Artie reveals how attracted to technology she really is. It's weird. She's weird. <laughs> I read the original script for this episode, and in the original script, she actually slept with Data. I'm glad they cut that out. As it is, it's weird. My personal favorite part of the episode is when Picard walked into the transporter room to see how they were doing. Now, are we progressing, Miss LaForge? About like you'd expect, sir. Splendid. Splendid. Carry on. There's those little moments where the characters show a bit of personality. At one point, Goshevin is having a big discussion with a bunch of the colonists, and I like Data's challenge to him. Do you consider your position so weak that it cannot withstand a debate? And I also like Data's approach to trying to convince the colonists. I admire your conviction in the face of certain defeat. Though doomed, your effort will be valiant. And when you die, you will die for land and for honor. At one point, Troy and Picard discuss how incredible it is that any alien race can communicate with another. I thought it was a good conversation, in a less than good episode. And Troy says, The treaty is 500,000 words. They consider our language irrational and demanded this level of complexity to avoid any future misunderstandings. So in other words, it did exactly what it was supposed to do and laid out the exact protocol to follow for every situation, including this one. <laughs> the way they handle the conflict, they focus on the wrong aspects. The problem is that humans ended up on the planet by accident, but the way they handle things, it's like they specifically have a problem with the Sheliak, as if the Sheliak are the enemies. Picard finds a clause in the contract that allows for face-to-face -face conversation, so he and Troy beam over to the Sheliak ship. However, arguing in person literally adds nothing to their argument, they don't try to change their approach, and they end up just getting beamed back to their own ship. I was wondering the whole time how the Enterprise would be reacting were the situation reversed. You know they would be doing exactly what the Sheliak are doing to them, but instead of standing by a treaty as an honored practice and way of life like the Sheliak do, they would be hiding behind it, using it as a shield to bash through to their own goals and throwing it away as soon as they don't need it anymore. Yes. So almost at the end of the episode, Picard finally decides to look at the fucking treaty after three days. They've been beating us over the head with it for three days. Let's see if we can't find something in it that we can turn to our own advantage. Wouldn't that be one of the first things you would do? Or at least have somebody else looking at it while you're trying other stuff? What an idiot. And then down on the surface, Data does what he should have done in the first place and starts blowing shit up to get these idiots moving. <laughs> so four morons are looking through a 500,000 word treaty instead of doing the logical thing and bringing up the freaking robot that could read it in five seconds. Please access all Starfleet command orders to starships, star bases, and colonies for the last six months. Working. Increase? 
Increase. Increase. When they're looking at the treaty, a lot of the text is kind of jokey text, where it's like, you're not actually going to be reading this. And we get another reference to Urusei Yatsura. And Picard eventually finds a loophole while looking through freaking size 2 font. The loophole turns out to be that they can use a third party to arbitrate their dispute. Picard picks a race that's in hibernation and won't wake up for a really long time. So the Sheliak concede to give them a little more time to get the colonists off. Picard, just to show how much of a dick he is, cuts the Sheliak off when they're talking. So instead of learning a lesson in humility and maybe finding out that they're not the ultimate power in the universe, everything falls into place in their favor and they're back on top. And you can practically hear them screaming, I'll be damned before I learn anything. Jordy comes in afterward and announces that the transporter solution won't work, but he says it all jokingly because the problem is already solved. But he doesn't know that. As far as he knows, the lives and hopes of 15,000 people are riding on him alone, and he just failed. I would think his mood would be a little lower. Or maybe he just doesn't give a shit. I know I sure as hell didn't at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we close the episode out by going back to the beginning and Data with his violin. Picard compliments him and tells him that he sounded really good, and Data says that he was imitating human violinists. Yeah, it piggybacks on some of the discussion we had during Elementary Dear Data. In a satisfactory way. The Ensigns of Command, overall. It wasn't an outright bad episode. The concepts of the conflict on the planet and the conflict on the Enterprise are fine in theory, but only one side of the argument on the planet made any sense, and the way the entire episode played out was boring and tedious. I'm glad they cut out the nonsensical romance that was originally in the script, but the episode was still really frustrating. I'm going to give it a C-. I give it a C- as well. Even if the colonists wanted to leave initially, the Enterprise cannot help them. Why does Data even bother spending so much time down there if they can't get them off anyway? The conflict here is created by people who think they're too cool for school, making irrational decisions on all fronts. Honestly, it would have been better if the Sheliak had just wiped them out. Very sloppy writing. I like the Sheliak. I like the discussion on communication between races, but the rest was disposable. And I'm tired of the crew being stupid, but always ending up on top without learning anything just because they're the good guys. So far, Season 3 has been disappointing. Let's hope it gets better after this.